Now that we've taken a look at some of the theory behind how we're going to be solving these systems of linear differential equations, we're going to actually start solving them. We're going to ask the question, how do we solve a system of differential equations with what we're going to call distinct eigenvalues. By the way, if you don't remember eigenvalues from your study of linear algebra, or if you haven't taken linear algebra and don't know what an eigenvalue or an eigenvector is, it's important that you watch the video that's provided in the learning management system that reviews eigenvalues and eigenvectors, because we're going to use those heavily in the next few sections. All right, so if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are eigenvalues, with eigenvectors, which we're going to call capital K1 and capital K2. Lambda 1 goes with capital K1. Lambda 2 goes with capital K2. Then the solution of the differential equations is capital X is equal to C1 times the first eigenvector times e to the first eigenvalue times time plus C2 times the second eigenvector times e to the second eigenvalue times time. That's going to be the big equation that helps make this all come together. And it's really similar to how we solved uh, differential equations that were just with one variable in prior sections. Now we just have vectors to represent all the different equations that we're balancing at the same time. So for example, if we have dx dt is equal to 2x plus 3y, and dy dt is equal to 2x plus y, we found out in our previous section that we could write this system as capital X prime is equal to a coefficient matrix of 2, 3, 2, and 1 times the solution matrix X that we're trying to solve. The coefficient matrix is what we're going to use to find our eigenvalues and our eigenvectors. And if you remember to find eigenvalues, we just subtract lambda from the top left corner and then down the diagonal. So we have 2 minus lambda. The 3 stays the same, the 2 stays the same, and 1 minus lambda. And that determinant, so it's not actually a matrix, but a determinant, needs to be equal to 0. So for the determinant, we multiply the diagonals to get 2 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus the other diagonal, which is 6. That must equal 0. Multiplying that out, we get a positive lambda squared, negative 2 lambda, negative lambda gives us a negative 3 lambda, and then 2 times 1 is 2, minus the 6 is negative 4 equals 0. And so that factors to lambda minus 4 and lambda minus, or plus 1, equals 0. So we can see our eigenvalues are lambda equals 4 and negative 1. Now we need to find the eigenvectors that go with each of those eigenvalues. With the eigenvalue of 4, plugging 4 into those lambdas, the matrix becomes 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. 3 and 2 are still the same. And 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And we multiply that by the vector k1, k2, and set that equal to 0. Well, that's going to give us negative 2, k1, plus 3, k2, equals 0. And 2, k1, minus 3, k2, equals 0. And both of these equations are, can be used for the next step. One is just a linear multiple of the other. 
So I picked the one that's easiest to work with. It doesn't really seem to matter on this one. So I'm just going to pick the first one and add 2k1 to both sides, which gives me 3k2 equals 2k1. And then if I divide both sides by 3, we'll get k2 is equal to 2 thirds times k1. And then I just need to pick a convenient value for the complex looking side and then figure out what the other value is. Well, a convenient value for k1 would be 3 because one third of that would make it go away, leaving behind k2 is equal to 2. So my eigenvector k1, k2 is 3 comma 2. That goes with the eigenvalue of 4. We're going to use that in just a moment. But first, we need to do the same thing with the other eigenvalue of negative 1. While doing the same thing, we're going to plug negative 1 into the lambdas to get the matrix 2 minus a negative 1 is 3. The 3 stays the same. 2 stays the same. And 1 minus a negative 1 is 2. And we multiply that by k1, k2, and that should equal the 0 vector. Well, multiplying out, we get 3k1 plus 3k2 equals 0. And 2k1 plus 2k2 equals 0. Again, neither equation is necessarily easier. They're about the same. So I'll just take the first equation. Subtracting uh, the 3k1 from both sides, we get 3k2 equals negative 3k1. And we really can divide either side by 3 or negative 3. Let's divide by 3 so that k2 is equal to negative k1. The more complex side is the left side. That's k1. I'm going to pick a convenient value for k1. Not 0 because we can't have 0, 0. But let's pick the number 1 for k1. And then k2 would be negative 1. So then our eigenvector, k1, k2, is 1, negative 1. That's our eigenvector that goes with the eigenvalue of negative 1. So if we put it all together, we can then express our solution. Capital X, the solution to the system of equations, is c1 times the first eigenvector of 3, 2, times e to the eigenvalue of 4 times t, plus c2 times the second eigenvector of 1, negative 1, times e to the eigenvalue of negative 1, times t. And this, then, is the system solution to my differential equations. If I were to write it out in terms of x's and y's, x would equal 2, and we take the first row, c1 times 3e to the 4t plus c2 times 1e to the negative t. And then y would be equal to the second row, 2c1e to the 4t plus a negative 1c2e to the negative t. And that's what it would look like in function form rather than matrix form. Let's do one more example where we solve a system using the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. Let's solve the system x prime equals x plus 2y and y prime equals 3x minus 4y. We can write this in matrix form as x prime equals the coefficient matrix of 1, 2, 3, and negative 4 times our solution matrix that we're solving for, x. Now we'll go after the eigenvalues. To find the eigenvalues, we take the determinant of 1 minus lambda, 2, 3, and negative 4 minus lambda. That should be equal to 0. Multiplying the diagonals, we get 1 minus lambda 
times negative 4 minus lambda minus the other diagonal, which multiplies to 6, should be equal to 0. Solving, I get a positive lambda squared. Negative lambda plus 4 lambda is plus 3 lambda. And then negative 4 and negative 6 gives us negative 10 equals 0. We can then factor this to get lambda plus 5 times lambda minus 2 equals 0. So lambda equals negative 5 and 2. We now have our two eigenvalues. Now we just need to go back and find our eigenvectors by plugging those eigenvalues into lambda. Let's start with the negative 5. Plugging negative 5 in, we get 1 minus a negative 5 is 6. 2 and 3 stay the same. Negative 4 minus a negative 5 is 1. And we look for that eigenvector k1, k2, which is equal to 0. Solving then, we end up with 6k1 plus 2k2 equals 0. And 3k1 plus k2 equals 0. Again, one equation is a linear multiple of the other, so I can pick the easy one. The second equation seems easier. If I subtract the 3k1, we end up with k2 is equal to negative 3k1. And then I can pick a convenient value for the complex side. Let's make k1 equal to 1. k2 then is negative 3 times that, which is negative 3. So now I know my eigenvector, k1, k2, is 1, negative 3. That's the eigenvector that goes with the eigenvalue of negative 5. Let's do the exact same thing with our other eigenvalue of 2. Plugging 2 in for both of the lambdas, we end up with 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 2, 3. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6 times k1, k2 equals 0. Multiplying out, we get negative k1 plus 2k2 equals 0, and 3k1 minus 6k2 equals 0. This time the first equation is definitely easier to work with. We can solve for one of our constants by adding k1 to both sides, and 2k2 equals k1. This time the complex side is on the left, so I'm going to pick a value for k2 that's nice and convenient. I like 1. And then k1 is 2 times that, which is the number 2. So our eigenvector, k1, k2, making sure they're in the correct order, is 2, 1. That is the eigenvector that goes with the eigenvalue of 2. So to express our final solution, we know it's of the form x equals c1 times the first eigenvector of 1, negative 3, times e to the eigenvalue of negative 5 times t, plus c2 times the eigenvector 2, 1, times e to the second eigenvalue of 2, t. And now we have solved our second system of linear differential equations. Now that you've got an idea of the process using the eigenvalues and eigenvectors to help us find our solution, it's your turn to practice these on the assignment. Good luck.